Kia ora guys, welcome back to the Black Jersey. My name's Max, I'm the host of this channel. A big thank you to my patrons and welcome back to the channel to all the returning viewers. Just remember to subscribe to me and like this video if you enjoy my content. Right, so today's hypothesis, Steve Borthwick and England, can he fix them? It's more of a commentary video than an analysis their video rather, but I do think he's going to have to wait till 2024 to get any genuine success. There are a few forwards who aren't quite quick enough for test level there's a bit too much bulk in the back row for him right now so we're going to discuss who's in his team what um, changes can he make what can he do to the team ahead of the world cup without disregarding a lot of experienced players that he will need for the sake of that tournament the likes of um, for example Jamie George at hooker he played massive minutes in the six nations Jack Walker was the only player to back up George and it was very rare for George to come off, if at all, until 65 minutes or so. George is the defensive captain for England in a similar way that Gael Fiku is for France. I was looking at a lot of their breakdowns. George would often be very close guarding the fringes. He would be coaching the other players about what positions they need to get into so they could form the defensive structure that Borthwick came up with. Um, Jamie George does need to be backed up and Luke Cowan Dickey as he's moving to France. Is he the answer? Um, I'm not 100% sure what to do, but they do have to start investing in the youngsters. Um, I'm not 100% sure who could come in, but Walker, Cowan Dickey, and George for the World Cup would be good. They just really need to rely on Cowan Dickey coming off the bench to replace George earlier. George isn't quite looking fit enough anymore, so that is a go, I do believe. Over at prop, Kyle Sinclair. Aside from the Ireland's test, he wasn't um, looking very mobile. He's often been regarded as a prop who can move pretty quickly. I'm suspecting that he may have some kind of minor injury that he's still able to play on, but it's hampered his form a lot. Throughout the 2010s, I believed him to be a bit of a thug. I wasn't too confident. He's settled that discipline down a lot in recent years, but now he's just starting to look a little bit off the pace, though Alice Genge has been phenomenal. I do think Alice Genge will take over as captain for Owen Farrell after the World Cup concludes. But with the backups, Marco Vernapola and Dan Cole, um, Vernapola is looking all right. Cole is definitely starting to slow and slow and slow. It's nice to have him come on to um, shore up that scrum, but what I do think should happen is that Sinclair should drop down to the bench with Vernapola as. He is still good enough for test level, but he's not quite the mobile player he once was. I would like to see Will Stewart join Genge in combination. Stewart's not humongously tall. There will be a little bit of a height difference, but you get more mobility that way. You get two very hard ball carriers who are great defenders as well. Both of them have great scrum technique. Will Stewart really came of age in 2022 in the Tour to Australia and against the All Blacks where he got a double. Um, I do believe Will Stewart starts would be a good step for England. Over a lock though, I'm gutted for Ollie Chesham who will probably not be able to play at the Rugby World Cup due to injury. Chesham was looking to be somewhat of a rising star over at lock while Dave Ribbons has been playing really well so he has definitely booked himself a flight to France for the World Cup but Maro Atoje's form man, it is off the pace. Maro Atoje, when he debuted in 2016, I truly believed that he was going to overtake Martin Johnson and become England's um, most well-known ever lock and their greatest of all time, but he's lost the hunger that drove him to succeed so hard. He was winning, what, three turnovers a game, time after time after time. He hit the rucks like his life depended on it. Um, he was so athletic in those lineouts, and these days, he doesn't quite seem to have the motivation to perform that same way week in week out he doesn't seem to have that heart of a lion that uncoachable will to win that you see from blokes like Owen Farrell even as a 31 year old you can still see that competitive streak in Owen Farrell's body that he will win at all costs basically Itoje used to have that energy he no longer has it so I'm unsure what to do over at lock so Perhaps when we go to the back row, Courtney Laws in as that third line-out jumper 
is indeed the solution. It takes the pressure off a ToeJ to hit all those rucks, be the dynamic carrier. It allows a ToeJ to just essentially be another body on the pitch who is helping out with leadership and things like that. And maybe with Laws back in, a ToeJ can regain a bit of form. The reason I'd like to see Courtney Laws come back and continue to play six from injury is because Jack Willis is in supreme form, man. Um, Lewis Ludlam was looking a bit hesitant to hit rucks a few times, as I said in a recent video with a rugby analyst. Um, who's recently hit 20,000 subscribers, subscribe to him. Um, Lewis Ludlam is not as good of a player as Jack Willis, so you have to start Jack Willis. He was one of the real improvers for England in the 2023 Six Nations, and Alex Dombrandt just didn't quite look up to it defensively. He's an excellent carrier. I was excited to see how he was go, but he disappointed me a fair bit, so I'd like to see um, Tom Curry there, sorry, come back and play number eight. We all know Billy Vernapola isn't up to test standards, so Tom Curry, who's also an experienced player, good carrier, wins a lot of turnovers, can balance Laws, who's in as an extra lineup jumper. Because Jack Willis is over 1.9 metres tall, it is okay. He is a viable option if lifted by both locks as well. Over at halfback though, one of the big problems I'm seeing with England is that lack of leadership. Um, being made to continue to be the star performer, he no longer is. Maro Batoja can't quite fully concentrate, so the absence of Ben Young's in the spine at halfback, it's been felt pretty bad. He only played a single test in the Six Nations, and Jack Van Portfleet, I was so impressed by him in that tour to Australia. He came off the bench and looked so much better than Danny Kerr, but Jack Van Portfleet, I do think, is one of those players who got pushed into a starting role at test level too quickly and is starting to impact his actual genuine ability to fulfill his potential. He's always overshadowed by the fact that Owen Farrell is the only real experienced key decision maker for the team outside of Jamie George. And so Van Portfleet is basically being a robot and they can't play off nine as often. Um... It's it's not too good. I'd like to see Alex Mitchell get a go and maybe just shave off Van Portfleet, give him more time in the saddle to just learn off others rather than chucking him in the deep end and just hoping for the sake of it that he cont continues to improve. Ben Young's off the bench. Alex Mitchell as a starter, I do think, is a much better way to go forward. Um, Owen Farrell at 10. He's a big body who makes massive hits on defense. England need that second 10 in their starting lineup because they are a team that's lacking a lot of game management and you saw opposing teams were able to read their attack far more with Farrell being the only player who could genuinely organise it. Marcus Smith has to come back and hit 10 for me. Um, I called him the best 10 in the world last year. I believe he still has the potential to take that title back but if he's not getting the solid game time he deserves, it's not going to happen. Marcus Smith is the now. He is not the future. He is 24 years old. He's been a professional athlete since he was 18. Eddie Jones had him in the England squad when he was 18. You need to start giving him the due respect Steve Borthwick and trust him to do things. Just because he isn't doing all the flashy ridiculousness doesn't mean you can't rely on him. He is an excellent manager of the game. I watch every game at 15%, see how the structure's going. He's always the puppet master. Just give him the license to work with Farrell as Eddie Jones did. Things were starting to click. Now Borthwick's just come along and disregarded it. To solve the midfield problem... Ollie Lawrence, I think, should go out the 13. Henry Slade, he is good, but he's been a bit hot and cold over the last few months. If you do want Slade to continue being in the team, I would suggest putting Lawrence over on the wing and doing a similar thing to France and Ireland where you're using a winger as an extra distributor that can come off and be useful in set piece. As a crash ball runner as well, you can move him into the 12 channel if you want to start that way off the base of a scrum um, when you're not too willing to kick. If you want to get out of your half, well, maybe that is a good idea. Max Malins is a total passenger who shouldn't be at test level. I've said that many a time. And Anthony Watson, do please give him one more year at test level as it is a World Cup. But after the World Cup, I do want to see Henry Arundel come in to that role, be the big winger, things like that. And maybe post-World Cup, you can have Lawrence go back to 13 without Slade, something like that. 
point is you need to balance the experience with the um, strike runners. You have to balance the playmakers with the strike runners. Freddie Stewart, an excellent strike runner. And with him being that kind of physical player that's such an attacking weapon, you do need that extra person. You need to change that extra jersey in the spine from 15 to 12. Um, Tommy Freeman is possibly the best backup option at fullback as I don't trust George Furbank. Um, I do think Tommy Freeman would be better at fullback than wing. Um, he isn't the best attacker in the world. He's not the quickest, but I think he's a guy you could rely on defensively. Anyway, that's just a bit of a... Um, thought experiments on what's going on with England, possible ways that Steve Borthwick can fix the team. Um, I've got a lot of mixed feelings about them right now. They improved against Wales, they improved against Italy, they were nah, against Scotland, they, they were shocking against France. The Ireland game, they just didn't have the mental toughness to last that full 80 as they only had one playmaker in that starting lineup. Manu Tuolangi is not the answer. You need to look past the tactics of 2015. You need to evolve into an expansive team with a more powerful scrum, which is definitely improving. Um, Steve Borthwick, man, he's got a lot of work to do. Thanks to everyone who's watched this video as well. I'm going to end it off here. You can support me over on Instagram, Twitter, and you can make a one-off donation to me on PayPal if you're not too keen to become a monthly donator on Patreon. I really appreciate you watching this video, guys. Cheers, and I'll see you next time from Max.